my channel. Today we're working on 11 by 14 gray primed canvas. Of course you can paint this on any color canvas that you want. This is just what I've chosen today. Sometimes I like to switch it up and show you guys um, different underpaintings um, that you can try just to get your out of your comfort zone and maybe offer something new. Um, I'm going to be using titanium white and a little bit of light blue violet to start. I'll also be using a little bit of neon luminous orange by Holbein and some luminous lemon or neon yellow cool. I'm going to start the background just with this number 12 filter brush. I'm going to get my brush up just a little bit wet and I'm going to take a little bit of the blue violet and because I'm going to be coming in over top with the archway it doesn't matter if I go over this area. When I come in with the archway it's going to give it a nice clean shape. So I'm just brushing back and forth. I'm going to add a little bit down here as well for some reflection in the water. The water is going to be darker down here and in shadow, so I'm not going to add a lot. I'm going to wash my brush out and come in with the next color. This time I'm going to take some white and I'm going to go partially over. I'll take a little bit more here. I'm going to start to lighten this area up so we're left with some of the light blue violet and then it's going to um, fade out into a lighter shade here. I'll pick up some more. Start traveling a little bit further down with it. Then without washing my brush, I'm going to take a little bit of the orange. Go partially over top, bring it up, fade into that blue and start working my way down. I'm going to do that again, always starting on where I left off. So you're partially overlapping each time. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow along with that orange and white that's left in my brush. Again, partially over top of where I left off push and work all that paint out of my brush and again I'm just going to take one of my larger brushes here it's a little bit damp and just blend this out We need this area to be just a little bit darker for our waterfalls. Then I'm going to go back down here and add a little bit of these colors that we've got from the sky. So we'll just add little patches here so it looks like there's some reflections in the water from the colors above. The next two colors we're going to use are cadmium yellow light hue and black. We're going to make a deep green, olive green with this, or green gold. So we're going to focus first on some of the bushes that are in the background. For these bushes and trees, I'm using my one inch oval mop brush It's by Princeton. And I'm going to take some of my yellow with just a little bit of black. And you'll see quite instantly we get a beautiful green color. Once I mix the color, I'm going to tap so that I'm left with that poofy shape on the bottom that we need to create the trees with. So I'm going to start over 
here on this side. And I'm going to cover part of these up with waterfalls and some sun rays. And of course the archway. And a little bit of mist to set it back further in the distance. And it'll just soften it and make it look really pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and pull some more black this time. And then this area here, it's going to be a little bit darker. So you just want to do a line like this. And then a line like this. And of course you can use a different brush. I'm still working on foliage, so I don't need to switch my brush. And then we can add some of this down in the water as well. All the colors will be reflecting down here. Grab a little bit more of my black, mix those colors up again. And we can come in and around that with a smaller brush. Soften that harsh line right there that's the shadow. And I'm going to take a little bit of my neon yellow, cool, cadmium yellow, and a bit of white. And I'm going to start to add some highlights. All of this is going to dry darker because acrylic does, and because we're also working on a darker canvas. So it's all dry now, and I'm just going to take a little bit of my white, might be tinted with the other yellows and a little bit of that orange, just as long as it's a, a lighter color. And all we want to do here is just start the beginning stages of our sun rays, which we will be going over again. But this is the first layer, so you can just start right off the edge. And diagonally pull. Pick up a little bit of water. And we're going to go partially over this shadow line just so that we have a nice soft transition. ready for the next layers of paint. So I'm going to add some more of my yellow and black mixture. I'm going to add an area right in here, some rocks where waterfalls are going to fall down from. Just blocking in these darker sections. We're going to have some bushes and a bit of foliage on these as well. Without washing my brush, I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and just add a little into this along with that green in my brush. A little bit of white.
And I'm gonna take this same brush again. I got it wet, I washed it off, and now I can use it more as a filbert brush. You can see the shape it makes now. So we're gonna have a tree that comes up here and partially over top of this one that's got that fuzzy uh, layer over it. Take a little bit more black. And start to add a little bit of foliage here. We've got another tree here. And I'm just with a little bit of water on my brush and what's left in there. And pull down. Now I'm going to use a long liner brush. You can use a round brush or any liner brush of your choice just for creating some uh, branches in a tree trunk. So I'll just take black, a little bit of my orange. This will give me a nice brown color. I'm going to start right about here. I'm not going to see too, too many branches. If you have trouble with your liner brush, just use a little bit of water and less pressure. Those two things will help you quite a bit. Okay, so we've got our tree trunks and little branches in here. It's time to take another oval. This one's dry. I need it to be dry in order to get a nice um, brush stroke on here. So I'm gonna take, I wanna do some highlights and I'm gonna take a little bit of both yellows with just a little bit of white, maybe even a little bit of that olive green color in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit little bit there again it'll dry darker and where we've got the sunlight hitting these my waterfalls but I want to make sure this is all dry before I do that all right so I'm going to be using a flat brush for my waterfalls you can use a fan brush if you want even a filbert brush uh, I like the flat brush because I feel like I have a little bit more control whereas the fan the ends on the fan brush can kind of give me um, some streaks where I don't really want them so I have more control of fitting in the waterfalls with this brush um, and a, a filbert brush works too so I'm going to start uh, my first layer here with some of my blue. This will be a nice gradual um, 
buildup of color and we'll have some natural shadows by using this first. So the only part of my brush that I want to be using is, uh, and I tap it out like that so that it can leave a little bit of spaces or make some separation in there, uh, leaving me with that streaky look that waterfalls have. And um, this blue will act as a nice backdrop of shadows building up to a, a softer white ultimately. So I'm going to come over in here and just just start to pull some narrow ones down. Here's where we're going to have the biggest one. Get a little bit of water on my brush. So I just pull to the center, drop. And if you happen to go over just a little bit too much, you can push and take off some of that paint. And then I think I want to have another layer right here. So you can add as many as you want. And then just have it gracefully Spilling into our pond here. Maybe there's some more on that side. Behind. I think I want to have this a little bit darker, more foliage behind and right above our waterfalls. So I'm just going to take those colors again and I'm going to push and pull and then I can just start adding some foliage in here that I'll adjust after with a better brush. And add a little bit of that dark color I just used there with this Silver brush. And just get in between here. This is going to give us some more depth. So I can now create these little taps. And I can even turn my brush upside down like this and that just makes your tree look a little bit different kind of like those bonsai trees only this would be a giant one I guess Okay, now we can come in with our white. So my brush is clean and you see how it separates and it's got those splits in there. That works really well for what we want to do. So I'm not going to wiggle it to make it flat and together again. I want to leave those spaces in between. So it acts like a fan brush would, only I still have more control. Okay, I'm going to start my main waterfall. And I, I know I have that second tier in there and those, and I'll go over those in a minute. Bring those back. Now, just by using the corner of my brush, I can get in here and add those smaller ones. And just scumble and soften for the, the base of where it's dropping into.
I'm not touching the canvas hard. I'm not, I'm using very little pressure. I'm gonna come in with my second tier. bit of white. And from the bottom, just pull and join those. And we can go in the back here. Take a little bit of that blue again. I like that blue for a nice shadow. And I'm just gonna gently push and take off some of that. I'm going to do my next layer and I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and orange this time. Just all I'm doing is just tinting my white so it's just a little bit off white now. Start from the top. Now once this is all dry, all of these layers are dry, we can now come in with our final uh, sun rays and then we can add our beautiful arch. Again, I'm gonna be using my flat brush. You can have straight white if you want or you can tint it like I have. Make sure you have a little bit of water in your brush. If you don't have a bit of water in your brush to make it uh, more transparent. It'll be harder to pull those streaks out. Your paint will be too thick and it'll cover up and it won't be see-through. So you want it to be see-through and very soft. I'm going to start from here. Pull on an angle. A little bit more water. If you feel like at any time you've added too much, you can catch it right away and fit it out with a damp brush. So I'm just going over some of this. I'm going to take more white, less water, and add more highlights right here. So I'm going to leave all that paint there and then just pull and flick. I'm not going to bring these down very low. So 
So again, got some more white, less water, just in this section where our sun is. So it's going to be nice and bright right there. You can add a little bit of a glow through here if you wanted. If you want to sneak some more uh, sun rays up there, you can. I want that to be soft there too, so I'm just adding a little bit of a, a hazy look to it. Now before I commence my archway, I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight up here with my filbert brush. A little bit of cadmium yellow. And just tap, tap, tap. little reflections in the water. A bit of that green right there. I'm just going to add a little bit more to these branches here. Now I didn't mean to grab white there but I was being careful taking a bit of black in my orange so I'm going to cover that up add a little bit of black with my orange right to get that nice dark brown color And back to my black and green, and I'm going to use my little mop again and just tap some more shadows in here. So it has just a little bit more of a 3D look to it. And these ones I want to set a little bit more in shadow. So I can easily go back and do that. Take some black in here. See how I'm holding it on an angle and tapping so it has that sloped look to it. And we'll add a little, little highlight here, light little taps, not too, too much. Now we can come in with our archway. I'm going to add some red to my black and I'm going to be using crimson red. The reason being why I'm using red and I should add you can add any red that you want. I'm using red because it's complementary with green and I know that it will make uh, for a better contrasting and complementary um, painting. If you just use black that's okay but if you want something extra then I'll show you how you can do that today. I'm using Crimson Red by Arteza or Arteza. Because I'm painting a large archway, I'm going to be using a larger filbert brush. This one's a number 30. I'm going to get it just a little bit damp. Definitely don't want it dripping. And I'll take my red with a little bit of black. Remember, black is very dominant, very dark, so you don't need as much of it. So 
So just mix those colors up and you can see already as I hold it against the painting how pretty it looks. I'm going to start at the top very thin and go down, pull it across. And I just cover all this up. You can see how stunning that looks. It really makes all that work and all that time we spent creating that background worthwhile. It's a little bit lighter in this area because my white paint must be a little bit wet so it picked up a little bit of that just see a little area right here and it'll add a little bit of a highlight on the inside of that archway with my yellow, red, and white. A little bit more white there. So I'm gonna start right about here. There we go. And then from the bottom up, Just added a bit more of my black red color just so that it transitions right there. And I'm just using a smaller filbert brush this time. A little bit more black we're in here against where we have our highlight on the, the inside and I'm going to take some black with a little bit of yellow and add I should have done this before but if you're really careful, you can come in and add a little bit more where you, wherever you might need to. So in between those highlights, reflections in the water, And back over to my oval, oval mop here, a little bit of black, a little bit of yellow.
a little bit more black there. Just to add a little bit more shadow. And then a few more highlights. And then I'll start coming bring it in here with just a little bit and I'm going to overlap do some more black and set some foliage in this area. If I take a little bit of blue, I can change the temperature. Make it a little bit cooler in temperature. some more black to the side first. Okay, and then I've got an angle mop brush. You can use any mop brush that you want. Push and tap. My brush is dry except for the paint that's on it. Just make some most delicate looking foliage. I pick up a little bit of white. You want to remember that the sunlight. Casting down here. Just run a little bit of black, a little bit of red, liner brush. Add some branches in here. I'm going to take a little bit of my crimson and my blue. I make sort of a lavender color. I got just a little hint of that in there. A little bit more white. A 
We've got some stepping stones in here. Highlights, water lilies. And I'll finish this painting off by adding the last touches of foliage here on the side. This painting is all done. I had so much fun doing this one. I love an archway and waterfalls with the sun rays. It's so calming to look at, and I think I know the perfect spot on my wall for this. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and want to paint along. Feel free to share this uh, with your friends or any painting groups, and be sure to tag me in your posts. I can't wait to see them. Have a wonderful day, happy painting, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!